Welcome back to the morning show here on Rise News. Despite spending a total of 7.04 trillion naira to service both domestic and external debts under President Mohammed Buhari's administration alone, Nigeria may accept fresh loans from India for infrastructure development projects, particularly the construction and maintenance of refineries. Note that since President Buhari assumed office in 2015, the country's debt profile has increased by almost 107% in naira value. What this means is that Nigeria's total debt has more than doubled. The issue of uh, Nigeria's rising debt profile has always generated concerns from across the nation's economy and political spectrum. So to this extent, some experts say the government must make commitments to facilitate a favorable environment with policies that will attract private investors. And joining us now from our Abuja studios to discuss the rise in debt profile in Nigeria is Professor Ken Ife, a London Enterprise Ambassador and Co-Chair EU Africa Business Task Force Summit Group in Brussels. Good morning, Professor. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Well, uh, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Now, the IMF had raised the alarm about our rising debt profile, but the government, President Mohammed Buhari's administ administration, had repeatedly said there's no cause for alarm. We are within the threshold. Well, with this latest figure re re released by the DMO, do you still think that there's no cause for alarm, or is it alarming? No, I don't think there's any cause for alarm uh, on, the, on the debt side. Uh, what we, we don't have a debt crisis. What we have is a revenue crisis. We are, we are well within our benchmarks, and we have substantial headrooms on the borrowing. And uh, don't forget that when you say that the debt has risen, also, the GDP has reason. So it's the ratios that we use. And if you look at the ratios, Forbes has looked at the ratios and eventually actually voted Nigeria as the best in debt management in the Africa. Uh, uh, CIA Factbook has looked over the years from 2004 to the present at the, at the, the debt to GDP ratios. And it came to about 21.3%. So, the conventional benchmark is about 40% to GDP. We're still well below. But where the crisis is, is, is on the revenue. Because when you look at the second benchmark, which is debt servicing to government revenue, which is expected to be around 40%, we occasionally will breach that. Sometimes we'll even go up to 60% and then come down. It's symptomatic of the, the poor, uh, in performance of the uh, revenue generation. Uh, and we know where these, these loopholes are. Uh, one of them is the Fiscal Responsibility Commission, uh, where the 222 MDAs are just not up to it. They are not remitting their operating surplus on a monthly basis. The law says remit 80% every month and then reconcile at the end of the accounting year. Many of them are just not complying. And if they do, there will be less recourse to external borrowing. We also know that the tax base is very low. It's about 5 6% compared to Africa average of 15%. I mean, Ghana is 18%. So when you have that low tax base, government is doing something because last year alone, uh, the inland revenue increased the, the tax net from 20 million to 35 million uh, entities now paying tax. But they need to increase the VAT in some areas because our VAT is the lowest in Africa at 5%, when many average is 15 to 18%. So, but that, that, that has to come over time, but it, it, it does need to be uh, looked at very carefully to increase the, the quantum of revenue available to the government. Mm. Uh, professor, a lot and of government is also doing something on the oil. Hello, professor. A lot of people will on your side. You a know. lot, of, a lot of people will strongly and blatantly disagree with you, and they'll pick holes in your analogy. Uh, number one, debt to service ratio quite on the increase. You said hovering around sixty percent. Sometimes it's even more than sixty percent. Inches towards seventy percent. A sizable portion of our collection no, it's from service. It's service. Yeah. No, it's servicing. 
is, is uh, servicing to rev to government revenue. That yes. is the one you are yes. describing, so, not external uh, debt to revenue. So, yeah, I mean, servicing to government uh, re revenue. A lot of people will also pick holes uh, yeah. in your analogy by saying, you say you can borrow more money. Yeah, the threshold is about 40%. But the economies you're comparing yourself with are economies that have infrastructure. So when you are having debt about 21.5%, yes. debt to GDP ratio in a, in a country that is infrastructure is like that of 100 years back, well, then what are we saying? That has no working real yeah. infrastructure, that has no enabling infrastructure. You can't get in a car and drive from Lagos to Abuja because there are no roads today. So what will you say about that? So people are picking holes in that. <laughs> No, no, no. This is, is, is an open discussion. Uh, people don't have to have the same view. The thing is, let's look at figure. If you look at Japan, Japan's debt to GDP is 223%. Greece is 180%. Even America itself is, um, is about 77%. Uh, Gambia is 116%. Ghana is 68%. Nigeria is, 20, is, is, is about 21%. So the thing is, relatively, but we do know that those countries, their resilience in this respect is much to do with the level of infrastructure development. But that doesn't say that Ghana and Gambia have more infrastructure than us. No, no not at all. But the thing is that when you, when you look at the, the debt, we, we know that some of the money, our law consigns us to borrowing for capital expenditure. And two, if you look at the visions of Nigeria for 2050, they're looking at GDP of, of $6.4 trillion and a GDP of $1.64 trillion in 2030. Now, these are realizable, but you need to have infrastructure to get to those. And that will make us the 10th biggest economy in the world. So to come and tell me that because uh, there are dangers, because the revenue is not performing, and they know you should stop, stop borrowing, that's not true. It's not true because we have to build the infrastructure that allows us to to manage a higher order of benchmark. So that's, that's, the, that's the situation. But, but, and then, of course, if you, if you look at the data, go on. But revenues have never performed. Government revenues have never performed. It's just been a slippery slope centered around crude oil prices. They go up. That has been the bulk of our revenue. We've not collected taxes. So it has never performed. So how do you want to do the magic overnight if it's never performed? There are some, some other things that enter into the debt management equation. For example, rebalancing the debt. The, 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 the IAIGP, that is the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, planned for the external debt to go up from 19% to 40% because it's cheaper. You can even borrow for 40 years with 10-year moratorium at 2% interest. Whereas the domestic borrowing needs to come down from 89% down to 60%. Because in that, the, the, the borrowing is so high, it's about 15%. The government yield uh, securities uh, is about 15 to 18%. And then banks are, are overrepresented in that, in that particular area. And then they are, in doing that, they are crowding out private sector investment. So those are in the pipeline. So you can't say don't borrow externally. And there are, in fact, we should actually move more to borrowing from uh, Britain Wood institutions like World Bank and ADB and those, because there's a lot of discipline in their borrowing. They make sure that the money is spent for what it is borrowed and that they are sustainable. And that brings you know, to my much next question, Prof. Um, the DMO did say that you know, debt to GDP ratio as it now is 19%. We do know that the limit is 25%, so we can borrow more. But how do we ensure that we are targeting borrowing towards infrastructure and ensuring that it is put to that use, the productive use of that targeted borrowing. And it brings me to the framework, regulatory framework for borrowing. Do you think that it is steep enough or are people just getting away with mother here? Well, no, you are right. You are absolutely right that we have to borrow. But we have to borrow in the domain of sustainable uh, capital infrastructure development. Those are those ones that are capable of retiring the debt. So if you borrow to build rail, and then you have so much traffic that is going to repay, rail is the most efficient method of transporting goods at very high uh, long distances. 
and 20% is the cost, input cost, due to transportation in our country, while power is about 30%. So those, can you tell me, if you borrow and do a dedicated power, you get paid. But there are issues now around power generation and, and the distribution. But the fact of the matter is that we have to build this infrastructure to encourage in, internal, external and domestic investment. People want to invest where there are infrastructure. And so money keeps coming in. So what you said is correct. We, the law, the law 2007 Fiscal Responsibility Act precludes uh, any, any external borrowing for revenue expenditure. It's only for capital expenditure. And we have, to, we have to add qualify that. It's not just any capital expenditure, but they must be sustainable and, uh, and profitable. And so you need to invite more PPP on the, on the scene to, to reduce the time, the planning time and design time, and then go to market very, very quickly so you can re return, return the investment. Although we do have a sinking fund that enables the retirement of this, but we want active participation of the private sector so that you can have viable, uh, financially viable projects. And if you can borrow for infrastructure that are capable of retiring the debt, what is the problem? We haven't got any problem with that. But we just have to make sure we have that discipline. And part of that discipline will come. We, instead of taking all these monies from China and all that, which is a bit difficult for you to demonstrate sustainability, go to the, C go to the uh, World Bank, ADB, those, those lost, they will give you money, but they will, they will track you. And have SAP again happen. Okay. Well, Sorry? this is definitely Sorry. an ongoing conversation. Thank you so much, Professor uh, A.K., for coming on the show. We'll definitely have to continue this conversation at some other time. Thank you. Much appreciated.